So, hello everybody. Uh, it's good to present to you and it's uh, good to see what Alfred actually looks like after all these years. I've never actually seen him or talked to him before, so uh, it's, it's uh, good, to, good to make acquaintance. It's 10 p.m. here in Singapore, so if I sort of nod off in the middle of this, please forgive me. Uh, I'll do my best. So I started developing intmath.com about 20 years ago, and yes, I, I developed a whole lot of JSS, JSX graph things at the time, and uh, recently I haven't been doing so much, but uh, yeah. So what we're going to talk about tonight is making JSX graph mobile friendly. And my question, my first question is, why? Um, now, developers use large screen monitors. Usually lecturers have these huge monitors in their, in their offices and they, they uh, develop what they're developing uh, on those big monitors. But uh, the unfortunate thing is students require laptops to view the content in many cases. And uh, th this is a problem because maybe not everybody, not, not every student even has a laptop. One of the things that COVID-19 has shown us that, that actually uh, learning at home is not so easy for a lot of students. There's a lot of equity issues and so on. Students are more likely to have a phone than they are a, uh, a laptop, and they're more likely to have a data plan on a phone rather than uh, Wi-Fi for the laptop. So it's actually a good thing uh, if we, whatever we produce is actually phone friendly. Uh, also phone sales of, of uh, outside laptops for the last several years. And uh, one, one key observation is most JSX graph pages I come across are not responsive. They're not, they're not phone friendly. So I just have a little mistake there. Just let me, just let me do those again, sorry. Okay, now, sorry, this sounds fundamental, but uh, it'll be very quick, this, this early part. So 90% of you will know this, I'll just do this quickly. So we create uh, a div, an empty div, and give it some sort of ID, and then we create the board using this sort of syntax. And so our, our JSX graph board will go in uh, the div with ID J1. Now, by default, a div takes full available width, but has height zero. So how do we set the height of an empty div so that it will work in uh, in a large monitor, in a laptop, in a tablet, in a phone, in all sorts of different size phones and so on. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The width is easy, the height is a little bit more challenging. And a key thing we normally want to do is maintain the width to the height ratio of our JSX uh, graph object uh, so that everything looks the same basically in, in each screen resolution. Okay, so typically what people do, what most people do, is set things up with a, with a style element, and this is typical with 600 pixels and height, 200 pixels and so on. But I'm going to, I'm going to show you something which I encourage you all to do, and that is to make use of, sorry, I'll just do that again. Make use of the uh, inspect. If you've never used this before, all I did was right click and then choose inspect. And then this is the magic button. <clears throat> and you can see what your page looks like in all sorts of different phones, all sorts of different resolutions and so on. So let's see what this page looks like in uh, an iPhone. Now, you'll see straight away that part of the graph is actually missing. And uh, if the student came across this, they wouldn't know what was on the right hand side, uh, either they have to scroll the whole page left to right using their finger, or they have to scroll <clears throat> the graph itself to see what is going on in that graph. So it's, it's not so good, uh, not so user friendly for anyone. Of course, if they turn their phone sideways, they'll be able to have a reasonable view and they'll be able to manipulate and do things, uh, but it's, it's not so successful. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at options to, to be able to have a mobile friendly uh, page. Let me just do this so it's not too ugly. So let's go on to the next, the next one. Now we have a mobile friendly version of the same, uh, the same board. 
So now if I'm sideways, I see the, the whole thing. If, if I choose a different phone, if I have a look at a wide phone like this, I can still see, uh, go sideways, I can still see. In fact, if I go into responsive view, uh, it works nicely in just about any width and height. So that's what we'll be talking about tonight is how to actually achieve that. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that what I, what I was doing before, if I actually scroll around here, I actually move the whole board and I'll talk about that issue in the next slide or two. So uh, I just get out of that and go back to here. Okay. So what we need to allow for is uh, the phone height. Uh, we need to allow for portrait orientation or uh, landscape orientation, horizontal. Uh, we need to allow for a, a user that actually resizes the phone like I was just doing then, going from uh, portrait to, to horizontal or whatever. Um, we also need to allow for what, what happens when we're scrolling, which can trigger a resize. Um, and that can be a problem. And also we need to think about the space around the JSX graph for scrolling by a finger. As, you, as, I, as I did just in the last slide, um, if, you, if you completely fill the phone screen with a JSX graph, uh, then the, the, the user won't be able to actually scroll out of it. And so you, you have this situation where they're trying to scroll out, but all they're doing is scrolling the graph. And that's a real problem. Uh, even if they refresh the page, they're going to get the same thing because the page will go back to the same location. And that's a problem. So uh, they would actually have to just load the whole page again in a new tab or something or other. So we, we all, always need to leave a bit of space around our JSX graph so that the user can actually uh, can scroll nicely. So let's talk about how to do it. One thing I encourage you very much is to actually develop for mobile first. It's far easier to make sure it works in a mobile uh, setting first, and then when you when you see what it um, see what it looks like in a bigger screen, if you want to add things for a bigger screen, that's fine. But make sure it actually works on mobile before you you, you do anything else. Um, it's best not to set width and height using JavaScript because of what I showed you before. It ends up being fixed and you have a problem. Actually, when I, was, when I started doing this talk, I, I, uh, I did do a JavaScript solution where we, we changed the actual width and height depending on the width and height of the screen. But it was very messy, it was very untidy, and I really didn't want to share that with anyone. And so uh, my strong suggestion is to use CSS. And I'll, I'll show you some examples of that uh, as we go on. Now, the width is easy. If we, uh, if we don't do anything, we'll just get our, our graph will be the, uh, the full width of the, of the screen. So that will be easy. Um, if we want to set a maximum width, we just simply wrap the JSX graph div like this. We, we wrap it in uh, a div with a particular class and we could set the style of that wrapper for example, if I wanted it to be a max width of 500, then it would be like that. That's all I have to do. I don't have to say width 100% because that's the default already. Um, so if we have a wide screen, the whole thing will only go to um, max width 500. And the margin zero auto is just so that it's in the middle of the, the page uh, horizontally. Now for the fun stuff, for height. Now, uh, Intrinsic ratios is what I'm going to use. And first time I came across this, getting my head around it was quite strange. We actually set the height to be zero and we give it a padding bottom of whatever ratio we actually want for width to height. So in this case, uh, I've called it, I've called it uh, class div 10, 10 by one because it's going to be 10, uh, the width is going to be 10 times the height. And so 10% is going to give me that. So this will give us a div with a height one tenth of the width. So I've drawn this empty div here with uh, using that particular uh, class on my div there. So then that's going to be easy to fill with, with JSX graph 
if that's what I want to do, I've already got a width and I've got a height and then I can just fill it from there. We have to think about resize. It's, it's always important to be uh, allowing for the user to resize and see what happens. There's no good having it work nicely when the user loads uh, and then it all messes up when the user uh, goes to a resize. So JSX Graph has a method called resize container and this is how we need to use it. The first two lines about width and height here are because if you don't give a width and height to the surrounding div, JSX Graph adds one for you. And if that happens, then you won't be able to actually resize it when, if you resize the screen, it's just gonna keep the width and height that it originally had. So we've got to undo that by setting the, the width and height to nothing. Then the next thing we do is we get the width and the height of our bounding client rec rectangle, which in this case is the div that we're going to put JSX graph in. So this is very easy to set up. It just says, what's the new width? What's the new height? And then pass that to this resize container and JSX graph does the magic of redrawing the board and puts everything back where you had it. So the nice thing about this is uh, the, uh, if the user has made changes, they've, they've moved sliders around or they've moved objects around or done whatever you want them to do, and then they resize the screen, uh, then all of their settings will be retained and everything will be just fine. Um, I just said all those things. And all we have to do is each time uh, there's a resize, we just run those, uh, those three elements uh, for the various boards that we've got on the, on the screen. Here's an example of a square case. So I'll go back and I'll do this again, and I'll show that it just works for uh, pretty much any, any kind of size and shape like this. Uh, when, when the Apple Watch uh, finally starts allowing you to display HTML pages, I'm ready. Bring it on. Okay, so what, what I have to allow for here is whether I'm, I'm in uh, portrait mode or whether I'm in landscape mode, and I need to make sure that it doesn't go bigger than uh, the, the, the height of the, the, the available height uh, or the available width. Now I'm showing this one because this was one of the most challenging ones to actually get right. Um, and uh, for the square case, we, we have a wrapper like I did before. And then the style details are, are a bit scary. Don't worry, I've, I've created an example page where I've listed all of this, so you don't have to uh, try to remember any of this. But this was actually quite difficult to get right. I'm, the page I use is, uh, is using a flex style. Um, and my height I actually do on the wrap and calc 100 V min minus 3.5 M V min actually means the minimum of the browser height and the browser width. The minus 3.5 M is just to allow for that heading that I had on the page. Um, most of the time, this is because I'm using slides here. Most of the time, if you uh, have, have got a page, you don't have to worry about that so much. Um, I've got an ordinary page, I mean. Then on the JS, JS, JXG box three that I'm, I'm doing here, uh, I set height to auto and I set the width on this. Why? Well, as I said, it was a bit troublesome to get this set up. I, I thought all I would have to do is set the width and height on the outer wrap, but that didn't work. Uh, this was the only thing that actually worked. Then the class uh, dot, uh, div, div square is just the height zero and padding bottom 100% to give me the square uh, shape that I had. So that was fun getting that to work. Now, resize. Um, what I do with the resize is I actually uh, do it with an ad event listener and I use a resize throttler. Why? Because actually when you, when you resize a page, it's actually very expensive on the CPU. If you've got animations and things going on and you try and resize while that's happening, things will slow down big time because the browser is very busy having to uh, redraw everything and this reflow going on and all of that. So uh, we use this resize throttler and in the resize throttler function, uh, that's where I call the resize container. So every time the, the user 
uh, resizes the page, or if they resize the page, then uh, we, we call the resize container and everything works. Now, I'll show you a couple of example pages. Uh, and uh, before I talk about those, uh, one, of these, one of the examples, if I can just go back to here, one of the, one of the phones that, um, that Chrome actually allows you to try is Galaxy Fold. And Galaxy Fold is only 280 pixels wide. And uh, 280 pixels uh, is one of the narrowest uh, phones that I've come across. I've mostly been developing things for iPhone 5. It's actually 320 by 568, quite small. Uh, but now we have to even allow for even, even less. Uh, the key thing is once you've actually set up the CSS properly, you just don't have to worry. It's, it's, it uh, is going to work for you. So let's look, look at some real examples. Uh, sorry, that's just happening because I'm messing around in the middle. Okay, so this first page is actually from, from my site. Uh, I actually sold the site at the beginning of the year, so it's not mine anymore. So uh, some of the things have actually changed in here, but not much. And this is one of the most popular pages on my site. Uh, it's, it's just a calculator for polar to rectangular. And if I, if I change an angle or something here, say I'll make it uh, 340 degrees or something and calculate all of the numbers update as does the diagram. Similarly, I can change my angles here and everything updates like that. Um, now, a couple of principles that I want to show. First thing I better do is I better uh, convince you that it's going to work on a phone. So I just show you what it works like on a phone. Uh, like this. Okay, so as you can see, the, the graph itself actually works. Uh, of course, you have a problem when you've got a lot of things going on like this. It is going to be troublesome for the user to, uh, to be scrolling up and down and so on. Uh, we, we have to limit what, we, what we're trying to do on a page when we're allowing for phones as well, of course. Uh, but things work just nicely on, uh, on a phone. That's on the Galaxy Fold, of course. Let's go to a more reasonable size like maybe this one. Okay, now you notice uh, each time I'm changing, there is a delay before the, the graph actually resizes. And that was that, what I was talking about before throttling. I don't want it to immediately resize because it becomes too busy if you're doing a lot of resizes. So uh, that's why that's actually happening. Something that I want to point out, when I first started developing JSX graph, I used to put all of this sort of stuff on the graph itself and uh, move things around. That seemed to be the easiest way to do it. But once I started to actually uh, try to develop things for phone, that became really quite troublesome. When this gets really small, if you've got text elements and so on around the place, uh, they get really small or they get pushed towards the edge of the screen and it's really quite messy. So these days uh, I usually put all of my, my um, sort of information elements, if you like, outside of the JSX graph. So all we are doing on the graph is basically playing with the graph like this. Um, there's a couple of errors that are occurring down here, which Alfred knows about, and he's assured me he's fixed it for the next version. So do not panic. Okay, so let's go to the, to the next one. Now, um, two days ago in the first session, as I was lying in bed listening on using my phone, uh, the presenter, uh, Leslie Wong, actually talked about Game of Life. And I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. I'll, I'll have a look at that while, while the presentation is going on. And I went to the page and it was, oh no, please use your iPad or desktop to browse the website. And I thought, no, I want to do it on my phone. So what I did the next day was I, I uh, did a little bit of work on the page and I uh, can assure Leslie that it does actually work nicely on a phone. Here it is uh, on the uh, iPhone Plus, and we'll go responsive and show that it works 
uh, in a whole lot of different, different sizes. So I'll make this available and Leslie can go mad on uh, making, uh, making use of what I've done there. Uh, all of these buttons have messed up. I didn't spend time trying to get those, those right. I just wanted to show that it was going to be possible to get J, uh, JSX graph to work in, in that application. So everything works. All the little beasties go everywhere. Um, you notice what happened then when I resized, everything just keeps on working fine and there's no great performance hit or whatever. Uh, I reset, change to my favorite pattern, which was this one and start and everything works just fine. Okay. And then, um, what I just showed you. And then what I've done is I've created a mock-up page. It's just sort of an example page uh, with the various things that I've talked about here. So uh, here they are when you, uh, I'll, I'll send these slides to, uh, to Alfred and you'll find the links at the back here. Uh, and I'll show you what this is. So as I said, it's just a mock-up page. It's just kind of got a header area and a side area of me and a, and a main. So I'll, I'll show it to you in a phone. Let's just choose a iPhone, so like this. Um, now things like Moodle are, are already phone friendly. So it seems to me that all we have to do is get our JSX graph phone friendly, and then the whole thing will work nicely on a phone. And so similarly uh, in, in Moodle, when you have a wide screen, then you get your, um, uh, your menu on, on the left like that or on the right, wherever it actually goes. Um, and when you go to a, to a phone size, that will disappear or become a div up the top like this. Okay, so uh, I'm just going through this quickly because this is all the stuff that I've just talked about in the talk. Um, and uh, you have a look at the source code of this particular page and you can see what I've actually done. Here's the full, de full details of the, of the resize throttler. Uh, this is very easy to do. You just copy and paste my code here. Um, and this talks about what happens on the resize. So this is the issue I talked about, getting rid of the uh, width and height that JSX graphs gives us so that the rest of what we have to do works. Um, so here's an example. Uh, I'm, using, I'm using my trick here, my intrinsic ratios trick with 33.33%. So the ratio of width to height is going to be three to one. So here's my three to one. Uh, and as you can see on my phone, everything works nicely with the slider and so on. Um, I just want to point out that the slider is actually below the graph and I'll mention in a minute why I've done that rather than having it above. Now, here's an issue that I came across uh, a lot of times that used to drive me nuts. Uh, on most phones, when you scroll down, uh, your phone is fairly uh, clear of stuff. You can read the page. When you scroll back up again, you get, uh, you get the address bar actually showing. Some like Firefox shows it down the bottom, uh, whatever. When this appears, it actually it triggers a resize. And uh, that was giving me a real, a real headache because things were resizing when I didn't want them to and the whole thing would get small and then you'd stop scrolling and it would get big again and it was just, it was just ugly. So uh, what I've done is I've just put in uh, an event listener on the scroll and all it does is it just sets scrolling to false and uh, sorry, scrolling to true when you're actually scrolling and then uh, the, the resize throttle doesn't work if you're actually scrolling. So that's just a very easy fix. So in summary, when the user is scrolling, no resizing takes place. Uh, they stop scrolling, then there may be a resize after that if necessary. Here's a rectangular graph. Um, here's, here's one simple one where uh, the value of the slider is being shown in the, in the text element here. Once again, I've put the, uh, the slider underneath. And here's why. 
If you have the, the slider above and then the key information below, when the user is actually trying to use that slider, they can't read what's actually going on, the important thing that you want them to see. So it's best to actually have interactive elements underneath and then the information elements above that so that when their finger in the hand and everything is in the way here, they can still see what's going on uh, above. Then here's my example of a square graph. And I, I remember being very impressed when this came out in JSX graph. I thought that's a beautiful thing to actually do. So basically that's, that's it from me. Hopefully it all makes sense. Uh, you can use this page as a template uh, for your own mobile friendly graph, JSX graph pages and hopefully it all works for you. So with that, I'd like to finish and 